This is the video for Team Carbon Aerogel and ENMA 490 for the spring of 2015. Hi, we're Team Carbon Aerogel and our goal was to create a mechanically reinforced carbon aerogel for joule heating in thermally hostile environments. Member roles. Hi, my name is Alan Chachevsky. I was head of the synthesis team and lead editor for the reports. Hi, I'm Stephen Barbagallo and I handled the thermal modeling. Hi, I'm Nate Shriver, and uh, I was on the modeling team, and my role was as secretary and part of the electrical resistivity modeling work. Hi, I'm Naveen Chowdhury, and I headed the microstructure modeling. Hi, my name is Joseph Langreo. I was team treasurer, and I was the videographer for this project. Hi, my name is Kyle Qualters, and I'm the team leader and a member of the prototyping team. This right here is a team meeting where we discuss the design of our aerogel. First, we decided that the volume fraction of fibers in our aerogel would be important because that would greatly affect its properties. Next, we decided that porosity, specifically pore size and density, would be important in affecting the properties as well. Both these factors would greatly affect the electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and density of our material. Next, we decided that the shape of the material would be important in determining what kind of testing and characterization we could do. After discussing what to consider in the design of our aerogel, we determined what performance standards were more important for our aerogel. And what we're doing right here is discussing what is the most important and what is the least important. First, we had to make sure that it could function as a thermal insulator. This was important so that it could be applied as a fabric. Next, it had to be able to jewel heat for the novelty aspect of the project. And lastly, it had to be mechanically durable and flexible. And that is one of our team meetings. The modeling of our aerogel. All right, so for our microstructure, we modeled it in 2D. Uh, our P1 here is the start of our, one of our fibers. It was assigned randomly an X and Y coordinate. And then our P2 is the end of one. It's uh, FL, which is the fiber length uh, set distance away. Uh, but orientation is determined by this offset angle from 90 degrees theta which we define. Uh, once we have those two points, we can generate a fiber given our diameter. And once we have that, we go down to the line scan and we check each point. And if the point is outside the fiber, we give it a hollow circle. If it's inside, it's shaded. Uh, in our actual model, it's uh, blue and red, but this is essentially how we construct our microstructure. So to model the electrical resistivity of our material, we first uh, took a line scan of like each um, line in the sheet and that counted as a series each line and then we considered each line as a parallel circuit to each other so we uh, added up the reciprocals and then took the reciprocal so we treated it as a parallel circuit here and this is like how we calculated the series circuits. The first assumption in our thermal model is the structure of our uh, system in question. We simplified to a cylinder of 200 pounds and 6 feet. Uh, the next simplification we did was the body heat that starts, the finite source that we work with. So in this case, we took the thermal heat capacity of the body as an average, and the average body temp should be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we accounted for heat leaving the body only by uh, con conduction, not accounting for convection or radiation. So we took reported thermal conductivity values from the literature and applied a gradient of negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside versus the 98.6 on the inside. Um, this is a simplified version of Fick's first law of thermal diffusion. Next, we accounted for heat generated by the body. For a sedentary body, we approximated that to be about 2,400 kilocalories per day. And we say that this can regulate itself at about one watt per second. Um, so essentially saying if you get too hot or too cold, you can change that rate. Finally, we accounted for joule heating by the fabric at a 12 volt uh, potential. We summed these fluxes that are coming in and out of the system at a DT of one second, and we were able to get a body heat. The synthesis of our aerogel. The following picture shows the materials we use for our synthesis. Sodium carbonate, resorcinol, formaldehyde, DI water, and other various lab equipment. Not pictured was the pre-oxidized pan fibers which we used to reinforce our aerogel. In the first step of our synthesis, we added 24 grams of resorcinol to 314 grams of water to, to get a WR ratio of 90. Then, we mix the solution using a stir plate and a store bar. This is important to dissolve all the resorcinol in the solution. The next step was to add formaldehyde to the solution. We added 13.14 grams of formaldehyde using a pipette to help get exact amounts. 
This was done in order to get an FR ratio of 2. Then we added it to the solution that was already mixed in. The next step was to add sodium carbonate. We added 0.048 grams of sodium carbonate to catalyze the polymerization of resorcinol with formaldehyde and water because at room temperature the reaction is too slow. This yielded an RC ratio of 481. Next, we covered the solution with aluminum foil during mixing in order to prevent losses due to evaporation. Once done mixing, we split the solution into four sealed containers. We made sure that this was sealed tightly so that solution wouldn't evaporate during gelation. We had four samples. Sample 1 was to be an ambient dried carbon aerogel. Sample 2 was to be an ambient dried carbon fiber reinforced aerogel. Sample 3 was to be a freeze dried carbon aerogel. And sample 4 was to be a freeze dried carbon fiber reinforced aerogel. This next step involved impregnating the pan fibers into the solution. Note, this should be done in vacuum in order to prevent the creation of air pockets, but we didn't have the equipment. Next, we put all four samples into the oven. This was done to, to promote cost linking and to allow for gelation. This was done at 50 degrees Celsius for one day, 95 degrees Celsius for two days. Again, make sure the samples were sealed shut. Next, half the samples were brought to a freeze dryer. And this is how they looked after freeze drying. The other half of the samples were solvent exchanged with acetone to remove the impurities in the gel and to prepare them for ambient drying, which was done at 50 degrees Celsius for three days and 100 degrees Celsius for one day. At this point in the synthesis, we had our RF aerogels, but we were unable to secure a tube furnace with nitrogen control to carbonize our samples. The conclusion. In conclusion, we were able to model the electrical conductivity as a function of fiber content. Additionally, we were able to model and quantify thermal performance in two thermally hostile environments. However, we found that dual heating in the current fabric geometry was insufficient to provide any marginal benefit given the conditions and thermal gradients in the current system. However, we believe in the future this carbon aerogel could be useful as a fabric component rather than a bulk fabric.